congratulations on a wonderful first week here at Miracle of Arts. And so you're smack dab in the middle of your run here, this right. new work, you know. I wanted to um, ask you if you were just, uh, there was a, a provocative context notes. Um, I wanted to ask you if you would talk about uh, somatic a bit. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that these were, this is your, you wanted us to think about that. So what, 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 is, what should we know about it? What's your, first of all, what is your definition of it? And then what do you, what do you want us to know about it? Um, well, I wrote that, so. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and it's the first time I put um, a context note like that in a mm -hmm. program. I usually kind of stay away from it because I mm -hmm. feel like uh, maybe it is misunderstood somewhat, mm -hmm. the idea of somatics if there's something that dancers do, or a lot of dancers do, that's other than practicing really hard all the time mm -hmm. and trying to get technically better, mm -hmm. that there's another avenue in that um, also, in my opinion, does lead to um, improvements, you know, mm -hmm. in performance or um, even technique. So I was talking to, uh, I was asking and tried it out on my dancers in the studio yesterday. I said, well, what do you all understand it? And some said that they understood it was um, the language or the communication that happens between an observer and the moving body. Some say that they thought it was the relationship one has to one's body. And um, I was wondering uh, if it is something that, because you know, your piece is, it's very, uh, it's performative, but in a, it sounds like I'm saying it's theatrical, but it's very performative. There's something that you're trying to underline about the experience of watching this uh, dance ritual. Um, what, which one is that? Is it um, the, the audience appreciating or responding to what's in front of them? Is it something that's going on in the body of the, of the performer or the dancer themselves? Is it something between the dancers? I think it is definitely something going on for the dancer and mm -hmm. the dancer's um, experience of self mm. in moving and in performing, but also ideally the audience gets the experience as well. Mm -hmm. So mm. I mean, I know that you must be familiar with this because we all do it sometimes mm. where we can sit and watch a performance and we're not that involved in it somehow mm -hmm. that we may be critiquing it mm -hmm. like I like that man not into that oh I like that performer mm -hmm. I don't like that one you know that kind of I call it um, like a higher brain mm -hmm. activity in a way when you're critiquing and An anal analyzing an analytical brain analytical and there's nothing wrong with it mm -hmm. really except it just is that that's what it is and then a more somatic appreciation would be or, or experience let me say first is that um, ideally the audience feels it mm. rather than looks at it and understands it intellectually first mm. so first they would feel the movement in their body or they would feel it they would somehow get a message that they don't know where it came from mm -hmm. or you know it's a little maybe it's a little more mysterious mm -hmm. although no, it's it's so mm -hmm. common as well that mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's um, curious why it is so mysterious to people. well as a person who uh, I used to live and breathe dance right and I would I would even go as far as to say that it was I said it was almost like religion yeah and, I, and as an African-American person, and thinking about what happens in worship when you're, uh, as my mother would say, you have to get out of self. Uh, the Greeks would call it ecstasis, but my mother talked about get out of self. And uh, you're in this moment and something is happening, you know. Um, then I'm thinking, okay, that's one thing I was, when I was beginning as a dancer, but then I'm thinking of Yvonne Rayner saying, um, all of her, I think she's disavowed many of them, uh, no to uh, charismatic performers, no to audience manipulation, no to uh, being moved, uh, being moved or moving. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of no's mm -hmm. in her manifesto, mm -hmm. which I think she might have, but what do you think about that? It sounds like a, that 
I thought in postmodern dance, we were in a way saying that everyone else was sentimental and that uh, postmodern dance relied on um, a kind of a distance almost as you have in looking at visual art. Uh -huh. um, and, and that's interesting that you're bringing in that side of it too because mm -hmm. I, it, somehow that is a parallel um, of parallel importance and, and mm -hmm. it's something somewhat different from the somatic idea but um, um, I mean I you know I was very taken as well with Yvonne Rayner's idea and I mm -hmm. kind of followed mm -hmm. a lot of that internally myself but I will say my core self I am a feeling person mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. just who I am mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not an analytical person as much as I try to be smart you know, I'm just not really that. Uh, I mean, I am a smart person. <laughs> yes, you're, yes, you're a very intelligent person. <laughs> but I don't make work from that intellectual mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. um, well, you understand there was a whole generation of us that were taught to distrust... Um, the sentimental or well, the... Yeah. Or Martha even Graham, for instance, had, had no credibility with the generation of makers right. because it was too psychological. Right, too right, rooted right. in this uh, post-union angst and so on. And what was there about Merce that made Merce more to the taste of some people? It was more Apollonian. It was more uh, out of remove. Mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just shooting here. I'm trying to mm -hmm, fresh mm -hmm. back. I don't. I'm not trying to get you. I guess I am. Uh, you're a really live, vital force in our dance world right now. And I guess my next question would, maybe that would answer the question I'm not articulating well, is where does your work come from? Where does each piece come from? Yeah, well, I mean, I think they come from all over the place, really. Um, um, but there's something very internal about my work, but mm -hmm. I try really hard to find that <laughs> Uh, connection to the external as well, so that it doesn't just stay and internal. Um, I'll say, like, I personally do do not like dances that are just all about m mushing around and mm. people ask to to sit there and watch other people having an experience mm -hmm. on the floor. Like, I'm not that into that at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, my work is kind of contradictory that way in that I appreciate what the somatics bring to it, but I don't want to stop there. I understand. And I see people trying to perform somatics as performance. Mm -hmm. you know, I do see that happening. What, give, me a, give me an example of what there, what is it? What's, what does somatics look like, at least by your definition? What does it look like? It could look like anything almost, but and also, you know, there's all different kinds of somatics, but mm -hmm. the one that I, the primary um, that I studied was body mind centering. Yes. And I don't know, did you, do you know Bonnie oh, Cohen? I will. Any chance? I, I mean, Bonnie Cohen was probably forming her ideas in the 70s when I was first. Uh, putting my toe in it. So yeah. there was a name, everyone spoke about it all the time, and people had different vehement supporters of mm -hmm, it. And mm -hmm. it was almost like a new religion or something. Mm -hmm. But give us a little lesson, and what was, what was it uh, about? Um, well, I mean, she's an exceptional person on that level. Mm -hmm. I mean, she could do things with her hands. That I, I've never had other people give me an experience like she she's has. She's a body worker? Or um, no? She was, I don't know, she just like became a researcher and she researched the body in her own way mm -hmm. for years and years and years and um, she's still teaching. Mm -hmm. um, I started studying with her in I think 1989 or something mm -hmm. like that and so every summer I went up there for about 12 years and stayed for six weeks at a time mm -hmm. and studied with her and I don't know, she could just do things like she could put her hands on you and show you something and you know, it would just start to feel like something. You'd feel something that you didn't feel before. But and it was not therapy. Um, it, it, it could be, but it wasn't, uh, it didn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Her program was not 
a therapy program, but um, the odd thing about it was that it really went all over the place in a way. I mm -hmm. mean, it was very therapeutic. The program that I was in, that there were a hundred people mm. in the room at one time, and usually there were about 125 or 30 people in the room at one time, and you get 120 people doing the same. Dancer people. Dancer people mm -hmm. or people who were interested in movement mm -hmm. and had a deep interest in these ideas. I mean, it would be, it could just be incredible, you know, mm -hmm. to have that many people moving in a room together. Mm -hmm. Bonnie was very um, um, lax in a way. I, lax is not the right word, but she, permissive. Like, she was very permissive. Mm -hmm. She... And it was part of her um, idea about what would help people mm -hmm. would, was to allow the boundaries to come down. You know, like all the things that we internalized as children, all the no's that we got along the way mm -hmm, forever mm -hmm. and ever and ever, or not like that, don't do it like that. Um, she would deconstruct those things, you know, for you. I mean, through her practices and through her sense of giving permission to people like you don't have to do it any certain way you just get out there and explore mm -hmm. and you do it whatever your body is bringing to the surface you let that come out right you know that was the first line mm -hmm. and then later i mean we did a lot of very specific things too of like you know trying to find different aspects of the body through touch you know what is a bone touch you know how do right. i touch somebody and get into the bone, uh, then there'd be different parts of the bone, the outside of the bone, the inside of the bone, the bone marrow, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the mm -hmm. organs, you know, how do you get into somebody's lungs with them, how do you help them fill their lungs, and it just went on and on and mm -hmm. on like that, mm -hmm. wow. all these yeah. different body systems, mm -hmm. and then one could see after a while how different, like focusing one's attention from a different place in the body would bring out different things, mm -hmm. different feelings, different emotions, different ways of moving even. So is that, um, I was asking about where the work comes from, so is that how you start generating movement with your, with your group? I did, I tried to more so in this last piece, and I, I mean I always have tried to, but mm -hmm. I never really, had, you know, very much time it seemed like to make a piece. And so it does take time, especially uh, one is working with people who have no experience in it. You know, mm -hmm. it's not something you can just say, okay, here it is, get it. You know, you have to give people time. So that was one thing about this process is I had more time and um, we worked for a longer period of time just working improvisationally. Mm -hmm. and. They seemed to be extra into it, you know. They just were so perceptive. They were so fast. They just would do things that looked amazing to me, you know, right from the very beginning. And well, maybe you've answered my next question was like, how do did you find some of those remarkable couplings and sequences and all? Uh, was it coming from improvisation? Coming from improvisation. I mean, at this point of performance of that piece, it's completely set. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. Down to the nth, mm -hmm. almost, but um, it started out much more loose. And then, you know, it's the first time I really used video a lot. Uh, and see. I really used the video all the time. I finally figured out how to take my laptop and make it into a recording device, you know, uh -huh. just by doing a movie, making a movie of the rehearsal and get all these, like, great hours and hours of things on video and you know it's and then you would go back and say I really like that uh, let's see if we can reproduce that or sometimes that from sometimes there. that specifically mm -hmm. yeah I, you know um, the, the kind of form that we worked with a lot that, mm -hmm. that rotated around um, that came out pretty early I mean we were looking at um, drawings and sculptures, certain kind of sculptures, and looking at this particular sculpture and how it would rotate around, and mm -hmm. so that was one of the first things I started with. Well, in the showing here, you showed that in a very um, pure and early form, and you mentioned Tony Smith. Right. And, uh, yeah, yeah, 
Uh, oftentimes when I speak to people about dance who are maybe not in the dance world, um, I say it's all, or think of it almost like um, living sculpture and so that they can get some sort of ease with it because they think that they're supposed to be getting some psychological message or political message or something just for people just your eyes see it. But can you have a somatic experience with an inanimate object? Um, I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> I think it, um, it's not about the inanimate object, I would say. I mm. mean, it's about y you or the person mm. and their inner experience. But um, whatever sparks your brain, I guess. Mm. And I mean, in that particular instance, a, a sculpture that a human being made, somehow it has qualities of the person in it. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yes. Things that we make—that's partly why we like them so much—is <laughs> that they have parts of us or parts of other people in them mm -hmm. in a certain way. I always assume that objects, and this is how I understand um, aesthetic objects that I choose to live with, they um, accrue through my daily interaction with them. I'm not sure if it's implicit in what they are, but it's what I actually over the days. A, a relationship, something I am endured with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Metaphor. Um, when I saw, I know, this is, you know, I don't know, I'm so concerned I'll be using language that is not useful to our discussion, but when you, I saw the showing in the studio here and um, the that amazing dancer, the young guy, the, the shaven, head, you know, blonde guy, Connor, Connor and I saw it happen and he was facing me and then I saw later I realized, oh, that's the same movement. Oh, I see. Um, um, Rosanne is making a metaphor in a way. This is what the, the, the discussion we're having now around fake news. Okay. Around, oh, and I thought, that's, that's wonderful. Like, I'm looking at it now and then it turns around and what I thought I saw was maybe um, not to be trusted and so on, and um, yeah. But I mean, what of what, of what use is uh, a metaphor in your thinking and making? Art? I mean, firstly, are you interested in metaphor? Um, I must be. I mean, I don't. You know, I'm not so like um, crystal clear about all the things I'm drawing on right mm -hmm. when I'm making it because I. I'm just like diving in and doing it. Um, but uh, for sure, I mean, I have this idea in that piece of a drive that was uh, a drive on the highway because of something I had read mm -hmm. that was about Tony Smith. And, and I don't need, I didn't even really know anything about Tony Smith. And I didn't even really like his art. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, until I really mm -hmm. looked at it a lot more. But um, I had read this article about Tony Smith being in, on this highway with a couple of his students like late at night before the highway was open to the public and he was taking in these, New Jersey. Yeah, and he was taking these students on this ride at night, you know, uh, illegally on this highway that hadn't been opened yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, just that that's just seemed very mysterious to me. I really like He wanted that, them you know. to have the experience of of seeing a thing that is constantly changing because of time and space. Yeah. And you, uh, dealing with a time and spatial art form, were trying to work approximating what it's like to travel through that space. Is that what you're saying? Or well, I mean, I think it just reminded me of many things yeah. that were very personal. I mean, I grew up in Oklahoma, and like one of the things that you do there is you're driving a lot because mm -hmm. We don't think of it there as a very big state, but compared to the East Coast, it's huge, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. anywhere you're going is going to take several hours to get there, you know, going to Grandma's house. So what do you mean? So what is there about this moving, this driving? I, you know, that I'm not sure. It's just, it's just something I remember, like mm -hmm. I remember the feeling of it, and also then it becomes a bit of a metaphor for me in the piece of going to a new place, you mm. know, going to a new place, mm -hmm. or traveling. I mean, I don't think that it really comes across necessarily in the 
Um, Peace. Well, you have an experience. There's something about, well, there's two questions I, I would ask. One is, um, what about time? Um, and I think you've been, you've touched on it, but someone, why is it eight repetitions and not six? Why, when did you know that it was enough to, this is difficult to ask any artist, mm -hmm. but how do you understand um, duration? And what is enough and what is not enough? Uh, you're a very intuitive person. How, how do you answer that? Um, at first I just had four repetitions, and for a long time I had four. And mm -hmm. then suddenly I was like, I wonder what it'd be like to just double. You know, let's try it doing double. Uh -huh. And then I just thought, that's even better. Like, mm. it works better somehow with double. And I never actually tried it with anything other than four or eight. Right. Because I just felt like when I saw eight, yeah, it's it's an, it's long enough that it's kind of challenging, not only to the mm -hmm. movers, but it's kind of challenging to the audience because the audience figures it out by that by after you know mm -hmm. I don't know how many repetitions but um, so it's it's could be somewhat tedious by the time it gets to eight but I stuck with eight now you're you're not afraid of this notion of something being moving past pleasure uh, and moving into another realm where you break through what do I mean by that is when I've seen other works of yours uh, and I know at least the, the one or two works that is long sequences of Bhatma. Right. One right, leg. Right, I think right, it's right. even on one leg, isn't it? Right. A lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them. And, and other things that are repeated, like the, the hitching of a skirt up and right. so on. Um, so you, I thought this is a woman who is saying, I am not here to pleasure you. There is something that you, um, I have. I have, I have no, no fear about losing you. I'm not here to entertain you. Like, that's, that's what I say, you're tough-minded and, and brave. Um, what do you think about that idea? Um, I think that I started really going at a more full, um, going after being an artist at a time when um, work like that was coming in, becoming more popular. You know, like the people I remember um, watching when I first moved to New York were like um, the Kiersmacher, um, other, and, and the music, there was a lot of the serial music mm -hmm. and a lot of the repetition of the I can't think of their names right now, but, mm -hmm. you know, the minimalists. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking, minimalism, right. Uh, Steve Reich, yeah. um, Terry Riley, of course, Bill Glass. And in visual art, too, the mm -hmm. min and, I mean, and Tony Smith, he was really before that era, yes. but he, I think he began to work more like a minimalist in a way, the older he got. Um, and, yeah, I mean, at, some, at a certain point, he took, he says he took his art completely out of the art museum mm. and just put it outside, mm -hmm. you know, and got into making these big sculptures. And um, so I think I was very influenced by the minimalists, both in, in visual art and mm -hmm. in music. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of carried over into movement, like how do I work with this kind of music? Although I, I didn't necessarily use the minimal music like other people did, but... Um, well, it's interesting that the, uh, when I saw it here, and I thought, oh, I got it, I see it, they're turning around, and, and, I'll, and then um, I thought, oh, I'd, I'd be interested to see how that fit into the work that I knew had grown, but then you seem to have exploded that. It is still turning, but everyone is independent now. Right. That no longer right. the group is not taking the same facing. Uh, what was that? How'd you get to I mean, I don't even know how that last section got into being. I mean, I just went with it. It was kind of intuitive. In well, isn't it true that the whole eight points was now everyone doing their own version of the eight points? Yeah, it is that, and it still has a kind of ritual sense to it, but it, 
I mean, I thought of, in a certain way, I was thinking during the eighth that they were on a journey. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like, okay, they've arrived now, and so what's going to happen now? And so they're kind of each on their individual path, but they're in the same space in a mm -hmm. way. Um, and they still have some of the same challenges of mm. doing some repetitious movement, but then they're free to turn it however they want, turn mm -hmm. it upside down, turn it off, <laughs> mm -hmm. turn it on, turn it off. So the second, uh, I, do I dare say it had two parts to it? Um, I, it seems that there's a, what I call the rotation. Yeah. Called Tony Smith rotation yeah. or whatever. And then the second part, and I was wondering where is she going now, and uh, the running. It was the running. The running is kind of the so uh, connection between the two I parts, see. yeah. And then there are other things began that it becomes, as someone was saying to me, oh, it became relational. Now, considering what I saw in the first section, but why did that person feel it was more relational? Maybe it was one on one, you know? And then there was nudity. You right. Know? And it's, it became more consciously, well, should I say, consciously sexual, sensual? Well, they start working with each other more. What, what and that and often it is a twosome, mm -hmm. not necessarily to get across something about yeah. a couple, but... Um, it's relational. It's relational, and that's like the primary relation that we have mm -hmm. is us and one other person, whether that's mama or daddy or brother or sister mm -hmm. or lover later on or just friend or whatever, we often will have the relationship with one person. It's curious, isn't it? You've just you've taken us through, and I use this word, I, uh, I, I don't mean it, this orgy of form. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. working together looking for those two people to jump, looking for this person to lean, yeah. they climb, this happens, someone lays down, and then it finishes with uh, Anish and that turn, you know. That, right. that was a lot of stuff that the people depending on each other, and I thought, well, why is it now different when um, in the second half? What, why does it seem more pointed, more, do I dare say, even psychological? That, that, I'm, I'm asking you, you have a, a feeling about that? Have people um, commented on that? Not so much. You know, I haven't been getting that many comments oh. <laughs> after the show. I think maybe I haven't been sticking around long yeah, enough no, or I something. Understand. I understand. You know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, I guess I just, you know, had to make a choice mm -hmm. when I started the next section of, like, what's the identity of this section going to be and um, it just seemed like people right away didn't necessarily want to do solo kinds of things they they got with somebody else I so right you gave away, them that option I gave them that option mm -hmm. yeah because we started improvisationally again when we started the second section any rules any directions um, of what they should be focusing on I gave them a lot of choices, you know, to choose. Like, you can be doing this, you know, you can be against the wall, you can be coming out, you can be going back, you can mm -hmm. be, I don't know, all, doing all these different things. And then a lot of it is, um, I don't like this so much, but a lot of it becomes, well, don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, like... You don't like to direct. Well, cutting away. Uh -huh. I mean, that would be the the directing that I do often is cutting away like okay let's 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 keep that that part's fabulous mm -hmm. and just cut all that other stuff away mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so I encourage them to cut away and just you find something that really has some potency in it like stick with it mm -hmm. you know try to stick with it and trust it and let it show itself so mm -hmm. it was a lot about letting Things and the people show themselves um, for whatever choices they made. You know, you want to get out there and do this for five minutes, go for it, you know, mm -hmm. and show us what that choice really is. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot about 
directing them and to show me why you love that movement mm -hmm. or show me why you have to climb up that wall, you know? Why did um, Thomas and Connor wind up together? I mean, mm -hmm. they, you know, when they first interact and there's kind of this mm -hmm. thing, that was real. <laughs> I mean, in a certain way, <laughs> Connor always has kind of had this, you know, not liking of Thomas in a certain way, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was encouraged them, go ahead and mm -hmm. keep mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, keep that, whatever that anger is or that need to like crush that person mm -hmm. or cling on to that person. And it was weird in a way, it's th uh, yeah, Thomas seemed more like he was the one that wanted to give a hug mm -hmm. to Connor, mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. desperately wanted, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, and I didn't really try to dig mm -hmm. into that deeper. Oh, you. I just let him have it. Yes, yes. Take that and go with it, perform it. Be the, careful, the nudity, don't hurt you yourselves. The nudity? There was um, two, pl the first, the, the stakes were really raised when Thomas, and, I'm, and I should probably be careful in saying, has his back to us, considering how you explored was that just an arbitrary choice, or did you really want Thomas and their embracing? And then Connor begins to, well, it was transgressive. I don't know. He was pulling his oh, pants he down. Oh, he pulled his pants yeah. down. Yeah. And um, and I thought, oh wow, Roseanne is going into a direction. Uh, two men uh, going, and then later on, it, 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 he dropped it, got dropped it, but then it comes back, and it was like a last image, you know, right. was it dominated by this. Uh, coming together, and they're both naked, right, you know? Right, right, uh, and they walk off together. And they walk off together. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, very peculiar. It very, was peculiar. Yeah. You know, uh, in the past, I have felt the, the work preoccupied with what I called, what I thought, display. Uh -huh. um, the gaze, uh -huh. you know? Uh, what was the first one? The one that I saw, the, that the I saw. The women yes, on the platform. Yes, most amazing use of our theater down there. It was like this bordello, uh -huh, catwalk uh -huh. or something. Right, and I right, was yeah. sitting right at the edge of it and I thought, ah, feminist um, a piece uh, about the, the male gaze on the female body. And as a matter of fact, there was a lot of them walking down and throwing a look right, in, right into the audience right. and so on. I thought, oh, I, I understand this. Um, and then the next one that I saw here in this space was one that had that Chinese film in it, which I've right. one of the cur most curious things I've ever seen. I never understood it, and a sculpture, right? Right. And the women with the rehearsal skirts. Right. And right, I right. thought, I thought, oh, Roseanne must have ballet vengeance. You know, <laughs> she spent uncomfortable hours in front of a, a ballet bar and being looked at, and I, and that, and there was always, and I even thought I saw it here in the studio. I began to clock when people looked at us in the audience. It isn't as, wasn't as big, uh, as important as I thought it was. I noticed downstairs there was even the running when people looked at the audience. So, um, display, um, ballet technique and presentation, I thought was very important, the bat mas and so mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. And now, um, the cast of Y, uh, that was, the, uh, I don't know what the names of those two pieces were, but the cast of Y, which is the latest work, mm -hmm. um, seem rougher somehow, um, more uh, sport than theater dance. Mm -hmm. And I'm right, is there something here? Um, well, Thomas's body, the, we've had very sleek performers in the past. I thought there was something about ballet, but I mean, tell me, why, why does the cast look the way it looks now? Um, I think one difference is is that it was created more so from improvisation. Mm. But we had more time in the beginning, like we spent all that whole first month mm -hmm. um, just really improvising a lot and letting people find their comfort in a certain way with each other and um, with themselves. And I don't know, I guess, I think because I had that time, I had this, 
this piece I felt like I had more time to let people develop a vocabulary that wasn't so based in technique. Uh-huh. Like the women on the platform, a lot of it, I mean, a lot of it was walking, but then right. when they would, I mean, I remember being in the studio with them and, you know, practicing these turns mm-hmm. and leaps and, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get them to do these leaps in a good way and all this kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. I didn't do any of that with these people. This this last piece was created completely from improvisations. So what I was reading into it as something about, I won't say the male gaze, but the gaze on just those two works, I believe, both the, uh, that when the women on the platform and the one that had the Chinese film, they were all female cast, weren't they? Right. Yeah, and I thought uh, there's something. I think some, there was one guy. There was one, maybe there was. Yeah. So I, you know, you see I was looking for the, some sort of way in that there was something you were arguing, something you were, uh, uh, like I say, when they look, looked at me, I felt like, am I supposed to be looking at them? Uh, they, they're critiquing my, uh, me wanting to voyeuristically they are performing, after all, but you know we're in a very confused time right yeah. now about what people think performing is. Right. So, but that was so I was that was a dead end. It was not about ballet. It was not about the female um, as an object of the, of the gaze of the culture, if not men. Um, does this one until that uh, beautiful man, right? Yeah, you know, what can I say? I think that he. Uh, has an allure, and we, and he told me you had him cut his hair. That's a very long kind of, you know, kind of dude kind of hair. Oh, right. Yes, yeah. and I realized when you cut his hair, he has a face like a fashion model. Right. And yeah. I was like, because you it started the piece on the platform with a very alluring woman. Um, uh, and she's a star in our world, and I'm, I'm sorry, the name is leaving me right now, but she's part Japanese, I believe. Oh, Becky. Yes, and Rebecca she's, play- and she's yeah. playing the guitar, yeah. and she's uh-huh. naked. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, ah, there's something that she chooses, a charismatic, alluring presence. And actually, they're naked to us. Now, his came first through this car, taking the pants down, and then there's that ass, you know, <laughs> that, that ass, you know. Uh, <laughs> we called it the ass reveal. <laughs> Well, and it is a hell of an ass to reveal. And I think, I, I, I don't want to just, it's not all prurience, but I thought, this woman is really messing with a lot of stuff. Yeah, and uh, to take that guy, buff guy, and we show his ass first, I believe. Yeah. And then he's completely naked at the end. Right. Uh, so, is it about the gaze? Uh, is it about looking? Is it about the intimacy of what we are allowed to see and not see. Um, I think so. And um, and then I think a lot of it is I am kind of reaching out and trying to feel what they're feeling, you know. Like why does why is he okay with doing this? Mm. Did you ask him to do it? Um I did, but only after I was sure that he wanted it, oh, I see. you I know, mm-hmm. like I, I would never force anybody no, to do something no, they don't want to do, but um, actually leading up to the first time they did the ass reveal, there was a lot of tension between the two of them, almost like not like aversion, mm-hmm. like this, <laughs> you know, and then and it was kind of weird. I mean, mm-hmm. Thomas, I mean, he's new to the city. He just moved here, you know, in mm-hmm. the last year. And I think he was very intrigued with Connor, but didn't quite know what to think about him. Kind mm-hmm. of like, you know, I'm mm-hmm. interested in you, but I'm scared of you. Yes. You know, it was mm-hmm. a little bit like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, all of that made it extremely charged. Yeah. You know? <laughs> No, I take I I, I, have, I own my gay eyes, so I am looking at things in a certain way. I own those eyes, but right. I think that also that the director was aware of these things as well. What does it mean to? Why was it so amazingly sexual? Uh, amazingly sexual, terrible, but, um, 
Connor is climbing the wall, and that body of his looks like a, a pre Raphaelite uh, or, or, or uh, Odillon Redon. Right, you know, right. something like this uh, saint or something coming out of the water, or yeah, water creature, yeah, he's yeah, back there. Yeah. And then he actually turns around and said, come over here to uh, this god who walks on, this jock, American, all-American right. white boy, you know, you know, uh, with all the stuff that we project on white boys now, you know, good and bad, yeah. and a lot of bad, you know, bad. their privilege and all of that. And then it ends with uh, Connor on his shoulder, uh, and there are two white bodies, and there's it's like uh, this chorus, you know, the, is the Menon chorus? These two chorus uh, connect finally, and then they leave, the lights go down. Oh, but that's the key to understanding the piece. <laughs> now, I don't think you work, you think that way, do you? Um, I, there's a key to understanding it. Probably not exactly, mm -hmm. although when I saw it, I was like, wow, you <laughs> know, that does reflect back on the whole piece somehow, Yeah. and um, I'm just going to leave it at that, you know. That's what makes you who you are. And, um, why, why? <laughs> why, why? Why? You know, why? Now there was X, right? Yeah. Why, and do I dare say, you're, you're more, <laughs> the next one will be, anyways, why, why? Why, why? But it is kind of a guy piece, right? I mean, the Y chromosome, I'm oh, thinking. Oh, ah. You know? See, I'm not, I, Even though it's 50-50 female and male, mm -hmm. or women and four men, I feel like it's more of a guy piece in a certain mm -hmm. way. Maybe because of Connor and yeah. Thomas. So they're very strong in that drama between mm -hmm. them. Seeing becomes a, a locus, in a way. Yeah. I did later in the, after we, we had the toast downstairs, who is the very elegant, tall woman, um, dark hair, cropped hair, uh, beautiful body. Um, she had just underpants on. And I remember her coming down toward me, her breast exposed, and I was thinking how far we traveled, that, um, that her breast could be out. And it, does, it wasn't about um, abuse. It wasn't about exploitation, except that ass being revealed like you know, you pull it down, you're all, some of us, I can't believe it's happening. It's really happening. But then you have everybody else, nobody else showed it without pants though, right? Right. Yeah. But what do you think I'm making so much of the nudity? I'm trying to um, understand, would you say it's all serendipity? It's all kind of? Um, well, I think that, um there's a way of finding things that can seem serendipitous, but mm -hmm. I think that just if I look at my work in a series, I do see similar things in all mm -hmm. my pieces. So um, I'm, you know, it's that thing of like, you, you're making choices, um, but sometimes waiting for the, the choice to come to me, mm -hmm. and then I choose it. And yeah. here, and sitting and talking with you, I'm, a, I'm answering a question for myself about authorship. When the work is made like that, and you sense that there's a lot of group effort in it, what makes it Roseanne's piece? I know? mean, I get that a lot from people, honestly. I mm -hmm. mean, I get people questioning, like, is that your work? Because you create it through improvisation, and, and, um, and I, I would just say, well, like, look at a series of my pieces and tell me if you think that there's mm -hmm. somebody there behind them, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, There's a sensibility. There's a sensibility. And, um, you know, there's all different ways of working. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm working, I want to work with who the people really are. You know, so I have to kind of as opposed wait. To. Well, as opposed to who they are as trained dancers, mm -hmm. and I have nothing against trained dancers. And I mean, I love movement, mm -hmm. you know. And um, but I feel like over time, I've just kind of figured out I should go with the things that I'm more strong in, mm -hmm. you know. And that's you know how what that's like. In a way, it's like denying yourself all these other beautiful 
things mm -hmm. that you're attracted to, but to be a creator, this is how I feel, you, you're, you're obligated to mm -hmm. not try to do everything. You're kind of obligated to try to go with what you can do better in your work to make something that communicates to somebody. And that humility in you is a very attractive quality. I remember when um, Arnie Zane and I were showing our work in England for the first time, these was kind of scrappy solos that we were doing, very repetitive, you know, we were very much influenced by um, the, the constructivist of the 20s, visual art, and we wanted to be like a filmic construction, you know, 24 frames per second, right. forward and back, stop, stop, yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I remember with being very hurt when someone from the Judson period, I won't mention who it was, but we all know and respect, uh, said, well, you know, they don't, they don't have a sense of style, you know? There's no style. And I thought, oh, shit. Well, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You know, you're supposed to be making a kind of a recognized uh, approach. And then uh, there was this, I, I looked at Merce. Okay, we love Merce because Merce has, uh, to use Deborah Jowd in talking about Cinder Driver in the 80s, Cinder Driver was stomping out her niche. You know, oh, that's what you gotta do in the New York school. You gotta get something that they can recognize it, and that's called style. And then there's Trisha, you know, and those people are real researchers, but they went in a direction that was saying no to a lot mm -hmm. until they get something that is recognizable. Right. Now, um, one of the criticisms of, I don't know what our age is like, I think I'm older than you, I'm not sure, but um, we, were, we were too freewheeling, you know? We would, uh, everything was, was allowed. It's, well, that's what we thought postmodern dance was. You could mix up style. Right. Now, so we're talking about what makes a Roseanne Spradlin piece, and I'm tempted to say, well, you know, there's a stylistic approach, but um, we've already, a, 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 delineated some of the things. No, it's not that piece with all the batmas and women hiking up uh, rehearsal skirts. No, it's not that female gaze thing on the catwalk and so on. And now we have this uh, the world of men and women and they are behaving like a, a tribe and then it becomes uh, something, then it becomes almost psychological. So, but then I I think I could recognize what makes it Roseanne, but I don't know if I could say it. And you're not probably not interested in that, right? Are you interested um, in style? I am interested in all of it, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I do have a hard time sometimes um, saying what my own work is. You shouldn't have to. You know, no. I know it's true. We yeah. shouldn't have to, yeah. but you know, for applying for grants and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. trying to get. Um, support. I always have a hard time. But they expect you to, to articulate. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've always had a really hard time articulating what goes into my work and what it's about. You know, like. I suspect that you're in a place right now where you are building great um, respect because you will not do that. You uh, allow. Uh, uh, what did John? Oh, and here I go into quoting John Cage, which I always do. The more an artist gets out of the work, the more room there is for other people to get into it. Ah, that's you know? a great quote. Yeah, you know, he's full of those, right? Yeah. So I think, oh, that's what's going on. She leaves so much mysterious space, but she gives tantalizing um, indications of strong directorial choices. Why eight times? Why this? It, it looks like it's random, but you know that, that everything is measured out exactly. She wants, and then that turn that it takes, and when it becomes social and relational in an era like we live in, about where everyone is suspect, who is exploiting whom and all, right. and then she is casting looks at us in the audience and so on. Um, she is, um, she's very much commenting. She has, and she has an ax to grind. I do, don't I? Have yeah, an just, I don't. Know, I can't put my finger on, but yeah, I believe me. I respect those kinds of artists. <laughs> but you're going to have it both ways. You're going to be loose, and anything goes. But the same token, you know, that axe, the, the axe of surrealism or what have you, is designed to split open something. 
Um, I feel good, you know, I feel like the piece has gotten a pretty good response, although there have been times like when I've met with friends in the lobby where there's been like, mm. you know, no comment really. Well, I'm glad to you know it happens to you as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But yeah. maybe that just means I don't know what to say. Yeah, and give them time. And, right? and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we're honored, very honored to have you here and you're working um, at a real high level and, and I, can, I can feel your, where you're, what's happening. And I'm privileged to be seeing you and you're really cooking, you know? And I'm glad that this uh, resident commissioning artist program gave you those things. Yeah, that you me need, too, it's you been know? great. Yeah. And um, I love the way that you see work and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. talk about it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I like to talk about it. But there have been times Because you're so it, honest too. I yeah. am, I am because yeah. I have a lot of scars and the art is supposed to be the thing that organizes a seemingly chaotic universe and helps me not become an axe murderer. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I totally get it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs>